Hey folks, Chris Vandeviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today I want to share with you a strategy that I use anytime I go to compress a track. Now this idea or strategy did not originate with me, it came from an amazing book that I'll share with you, and this is how I approach compression anytime that I decide I got to reach for that Logic compressor, the vocals need a little tightening, drums, whatever. So I want to share this with you because compressors can be difficult, whether you're starting out or even if you've been making music for a while. Sometimes it's not easy to hear the subtle nuances of the attack knob and the release or ratio. And so we go in the opposite direction. Instead of trying to handle things very delicately, we go very aggressive so we can easily hear what they're doing and then kind of back it off. So first things first, let me show you the book that I'm referring to because I feel credit should be given where credit is due. This book is called Mixing With Your Mind by a guy named Michael Paul Stavru. I don't, I feel bad for butchering his name. I apologize in advance, but this book is amazing. Now the title's a little woo-woo and honestly, some of the content contained within the book is a little woo-woo as well, but some of the most brilliant concepts for recording and mixing that have changed my production life came from this book and it's been so invaluable. It's not the cheapest book, but I highly recommend it. Now, when it comes to compressors, let's pull up the Logic Compressor. There's a lot going on, right? There's threshold ratio, attack, release, and maybe you have an idea of what these knobs do. For example, attack adjusts how fast the compressor reacts to the signal. Release is how long it takes for it to let go of the compression that it's imparting onto your track. Threshold is where we determine at what point, at what level, does the signal exceed to activate the compressor and then the ratio is kind of how hard it smacks down on the track. So, you know, all of that is very like high level. It's not easy concepts to describe. So it can be hard to understand what this is doing, hear what it's doing. So, you know, when I was learning how to use compression, I was watching videos and subscribing to courses and all this stuff. The folks who are teaching these courses would say like, okay, you don't need to use a lot of compression, just a dB or two, don't go overboard. And for me, because I'm terrified of making my track sound like trash, I would do basically no compression, like a decibel or two, because I was always erring on the side of being too cautious. And no compression is just about as bad as too much compression, where a lot of people feel very comfortable just kind of like bringing the compressor down on their tracks and just squashing them like crazy. And then they sound lifeless and you can't even hear them in the mix because there's no dynamic range anymore. So how do we solve this disparity? Well, we approach the compressor very aggressively first, and then we start backing off. Now, what does that mean? Let's just take a listen to this drum loop that we have here, right? I'm going to turn off my compressor. Let's listen to these drums and then kind of come to some conclusions. Okay, so anytime you use a processor, but especially when it comes to compression, the first thing you need to ask yourself is, why do I feel I need to use X? So in this case, why do I feel it necessary to use a compressor? Well, I'll tell you, to my ears, the kick sort of pops out a little more. There seems to be a disparity between the kick and the snare. The kick hits quite loud. The snare is further back. You know, there's some sustainer air that I would like to dredge up a little bit. I'm just wanting a little more glue and tuck that kick drum a little more. Let's listen again with that in mind. To my ears, that's what I feel needs to happen. We need to glue this together. We got to tighten up the kick. Okay, let's open the Logic Compressor. Now, I'm using the Studio VCA. This is just kind of based on me toying around. You can use any of the compressors. This just sounded best to my ears. Now, first things first, I'm going to take the attack and release knobs and set them to zero or as close to zero as possible all the way down. Next things next, I'm going to set my ratio all the way to 30 to one. So this thing is going to smack hard onto the track. And then I'm going to play the track. And I'm going to bring the threshold till this thing is popping at like negative 10, negative 20. Okay, take a listen.
Okay, way over compressed, sounds like trash. I expect this because the next step is we're going to start adjusting the attack knob and then adjust the release knob, check it out. Okay, so I've adjusted the attack knob. It sounds a little better now, but my goal is to clamp down on that kick drum. So I want a pretty fast attack. Now let's start playing with the release. Okay, at this aggressive level of compression, this sounds okay. You know, it doesn't sound amazing, but it sounds okay. It doesn't sound like it's distorting because it's going way too fast or slow. I played around with it a bit. I'm feeling pretty good about this. Starting to glue things together. Now let's bring down the ratio. So we started with attack, we worked our way to release, and now ratio, let's bring it down to a more palatable point. Okay, now it's starting to sound more palatable again. Now, I have a particular strategy when it comes to ratio, and it's totally based on a very classic compressor, the 1176. Now, the 1176 had only four ratios to pick from, in fact, five, but four that was very obvious. So there's four to one, eight to one, 12 to one, 20 to one. And then if you pressed all of the ratios in, there was kind of like a, a nuclear holocaust type of effect where it just would just annihilate whatever track you ran it through. Now, to my ears and to my belief system, if four ratios was good enough for the 1176 and people love the 1176, it's good enough for me. So I don't really fuddle around with all the numbers in between one and 30. I just go with four to one, as you can see, eight to one, 12 to one. Usually I never go much beyond eight to one. Okay. Now let's start backing off the threshold because remember the goal is, is we want to compress the kick so it's not punching so loudly above everything else and kind of glue everything else and dredge up some of that sustain of the room of this particular kit, okay? I'm gonna bring the makeup gain down because clearly the compressor is a little louder when we try to A-B it. Now take a listen, listen to the kit and then when I reintroduce the compressor, you're gonna hear that kick drum get tucked down a little more. You're gonna hear the snare, the cymbals kind of get dredged up a little more. It's gonna feel glued together. And you can see on the meter that the kick drum punches louder than the snare. I mean, the kick is activating the compressor at a much higher degree than the snare is. Now, the snare is getting a little tuck and nip as well, but I'm feeling good about this. It feels a little more glued together, a little more put together. I'm hearing more of the sustain of the snare. I'm pretty happy with that. I may adjust later, but that is my approach to compression. Totally based on this book, Mixing With Your Mind, I think it's an amazing approach. You start with very aggressive because then knobs like attack and release and ratio are far more obvious 
to the ears. Then if you're working very subtly, like one to two decibels of gain reduction, just this pop in one or two, that's very hard to hear if you're making an improvement, right? I still err on the side of caution, not compressing too hard if I have to, but it just makes way more sense to my ears. So I hope that was helpful to you. If it was, as always, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week, I'm posting new videos, new content, new emails to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.